good afternoon, good evening, wherever you happen to be in your day when you're watching our video. If this is the first time you're visiting with us, I want to extend to you a very, very warm welcome. If you've been here before or you're a subscriber, welcome back. We appreciate you visiting again. If today happens to be your birthday, I want to wish you a very, very happy birthday. So today we're going to show you yet another uh, scrap project because we just have a lot of scraps. I mean, that's that's the reality of it, right? Mm -hmm. So we are going to make a simple project. Again, the idea is that you can do these projects with very simple tools. In fact, for the most part, all you need is a drill, a drill bit, some uh, dowels, and lastly, a way to cut wood, right? Mm -hmm. And wood. Well, you will need wood, yeah, that, that is true. Without wood, there ain't woodworking. Right. All right, folks, as always, we're going to show you every step of the way, so stick around. So today we're going to take scraps like this mm -hmm. and turn it into a piece of art like this. Now, what is this? I call this a, a frame self. Mm-hmm. What would you call it? I mean, that's my... It's a floating framed shelf, yes. Okay, excellent. So we need to rip two arrow boards to the correct thickness and only two, right? Four? Are we ripping four boards or two boards? Okay. Four apparently. <coughs> and uh, ripping again is going to the long dimension, right? Whenever you mm -hmm. cut on the long dimension, it's called ripping. When you cut on the short dimension, it's cross cutting. Okay. Just an FYI. So the way we're going to do that, we're going to raid the, raid, raid the raid, blade. Raise the blade. Raid the blade. And my preference, and again, this is debatable, but my preference is to raise the blade just above the thickness of the material I want to cut. Okay. And the idea here is, if, even if I have an accident, it will hurt and it will need stitches, but it will not take my finger off, right? I mean, if mm -hmm. my by accident my my finger cuts the blade. Well, let's not do that today. And the easiest way I found to do this is just bring the blade. Do not pound it. You know, you, you mm -hmm. just want it. And if fence. you're your fence, thank you. And put the again, we're using uh, a storyboard and blocks. So this is the dimension we want. Mm -hmm. And in fact, this is a piece we're not going to use because we don't like it for our project. Right. The but the correct dimension. Different. And this will do two things. Now, all of the pieces we'll cut will be the correct dimension, right? Mm -hmm. And we do not have to measure anything. We do not have to, make, to risk making a mistake. And then you want to make sure that this is moving, right? Right, that's what I'm doing now. Okay. Because if it was binding, it will tell us that something is right. a little off. So now the next step is to actually make our cuts. And the fence has been locked. Yes. So there's two. Two of the pieces. And do you have a preference about which side gets cut off here? Do you want mostly that off or that? This one. Okay. Now to the safety police. Can you come here on my hand, please? Mm -hmm. I know a lot of the safety police that has been raiding my channel lately will be very upset. This is a way that for me is very comfortable to cut, right? Okay. This is a way that Elpida and Mrs. Weezer, I mean, I mean, and Mrs. DIY doesn't, do not like to cut, right? Mm -hmm. Your safety is your responsibility and you know what you are comfortable with and what you are not. I'm comfortable with this cut, so I do it. When Mrs. We Mrs. Uh, DIY and Elpida do this cut, they use a push stick, right? So do what is safe and, and comfortable for you, right? The way I do it, so you know, if you see my, my I have my pinky there that is straddled the fence and allows me to very easily guide. Do you see what I'm doing here? Yep. I feel safe. My hand is a little closer to the blade, I agree. And again, some people are nervous. And in general, you see the red uh, insert plate? Mm -hmm. This is where the manufacturers claim is the danger zone, right? Right. However, I would be much less comfortable being here mm. than being here, right? Yeah. So it is a comfort thing. It is not, don't get too excited about it. It's just a, a cut. Be safe, but be safe, make but sure that you are feeling good about the cut, okay? And that's the key. Do not do something that you feel unsafe doing. I mean, right. that, I think that's the important thing. Okay. 
One piece of um, two by six that really isn't two by six, but we're going to call it what it's called. And we've marked the dimension that we want for the piece that we're um, needing for the project. And I'm going to cut it just outside the line. Japanese finishing technique. Yeah. And part of the deal is because uh, in this piece it makes a lot of sense. If there is a little bit of water for watering, then the city band will protect the wood, right? Right. Where a stain will create a ring, it will just and if you want to re if you want to refinish it, you just burn it again, right? Right. Which so you probably need to do with that chair over there think of it. I might let you use your big the big uh you might let me use it? Yes. Nice of you. I know. So, this is an example of something that is both work as a finish and as a protection, right? In the piece. Right. Now, any fastening we're going to do, we are going to make those arrangements after we burn it because burning it first changes the composition of the, what I want to say, the water in the wood and it will slightly change the dimensions, right? Mm -hmm. Not enough that we worry about the project, but enough that we want to make sure if we have uh, any connections, they are not off aligned. Right. I don't know if any of that made sense, did it? Yeah. And we're definitely drying the wood, right? Right okay. now. If it's not dry, I don't know what it is. I bet you that's above 20% in the moisture. We should have tested it just for people before and after, you know? But this is a small piece, so. It's even more pronounced, the, the dryness. Okay, again, for you safety police, I have a glove on. It's a very heavy welding glove, and I'm also being careful about how close I'm going. Again, I've been doing this a while, so I'm a little more comfortable with the flame, maybe closer than other people would be, but I'm still being safe about it. And again. yes, this wood does get very hot when you're burning it, so you still have to be careful with that. And again, ultimately, the safety is your responsibility, right? Yes. We are not teaching you how to safely do things. We're showing you how we safely do things, right? Right. And, and there is a difference in that. And we try to tell you when we think something is going to help you be safe with it, but again, it's not our responsibility to keep you safe. Nor do we do unsafe things. It's again, not intentionally. Some things that I'm comfortable with, LP that Mrs. DIY are not and vice versa, right? It's just a matter of your personal comfort. And Elpida has burned herself with hot glue, so she hot knows glue is hot, man. hot glue is hot. Or burn all the sap there on the. Yeah, we're gonna start a fire. Yeah, the sap, the sap burns very nicely, you know. But you surprisingly, it's not much flame that almost immediately extinguishes. Even though that's a reasonably dry piece of wood, right? This is not a. Right. Meanwhile, Mrs. DIY is doing her favorite personal thing, and that is 
What are you doing, Mrs. DIY? I am rounding the corners of this newly ripped wood so that it looks a little bit more rustic for the finish that we want, the look that we want. So I'm just using a, you know, a pretty rough sandpaper on the corner where this um, fresh cut is. So that kind of rounds it off a little bit. Okay. And the next thing I'm doing is I'm adding a little more texture by roughing it up kind of a, at an angle so that it looks a little bit more uh, rustic and old when we get finished because with we, it. we don't we want that to look like used wood right we don't right. want it to look pristine and, and flat yeah, yeah. <laughs> and Alpida is almost done with her burning yeah we'll have missus look at it and see if it's dark enough if the finish is right or if i need to touch up anything okay we're going to show you the next step of the burning process when we're done supervising dog Atlas the Great. One of them. Where is the other supervising Over dog? Over there eating dirt. Ah. Yeah. The dirt eating dog. Hey, there is the other supervising dog. Yeah, thank you for coming when I called them. That's nice. But this one is definitely most the woodworking dog because the other one does not like loud noises. Yeah, he's getting used to them, but it's taken a little bit of time. Now, if you are to glue this, I would say do not uh, burn it, right? But in this piece, it will be partially visible and we do not plan to glue it necessarily. We plan to glue it unnecessarily. Unnecessarily. All right. So what are we doing here, Lupita? Now we're removing the ash from the piece. And this is just a plain um, synthetic brush. Some people will use a wire brush. I don't like it. I think it gouges the piece too much, but that's a personal preference. And I don't know if it's visible, but it you can see hopefully on the camera the fine particles right you mm -hmm. don't want to breathe those right Elpida is actually wearing a mask mm -hmm. i technically should be wearing a mask yeah. but we're outside but you can see the difference between where it's burned and i haven't brushed and then where i started brushing and it just brings out kind of a velvety brown color and also it doesn't stain your hands because the right this uh well, you this get stuff the you get the ash on your fingers, but that's easily... Did you just give our viewers the finger? No, that's a first finger. No. Oh, that's a first finger. It's not the second finger. Okay. Right. right. Um, but ash just washes, you know, real easy with soap and water. But again, the, the dust particles are super fine. Yeah. So be careful with that. And once you brush it off, if you decide you want it a little darker, then just come back with your flame and do it again. Right. Um, and then once this is all done and brushed off, then I usually take a cloth and brush it down a little bit more because there's still super fine stuff you can do it. But if you do a second pass, let it uh, cool down first. Of course. Because the, the wood mm -hmm. will start getting to the temperature that ignites, you know. And it's, yeah, it's very, very warm after you do it even the first time. So we let it sit for a few minutes before I started brushing. And actually doing that will allow it to burn better without uh, burning. Because that's carbon now. Right. That's coal in essence, right? So right. this dust is very flammable. Mm -hmm. But it's looking very, very nice, though, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like it. Okay. And that will become our shelf, right? Right. Well, Mrs. DIY continues sanding. And have you decided what uh, stain you're going to use on this? I'm not certain I'm going to use a stain. Okay. Um, I want to keep it kind of a, um, a natural, at least a contrast to the wood treated with the Shusugi band method. Okay. So that uh, it's, it's distinct. The, the different pieces of our project are distinct in color and function. And now we're talking about matters of taste, uh, folks. This is, these are our choices. It doesn't mean that this cannot be finished in many different ways, right? Absolutely. This is just the way we decided to do it. Okay, so what are we doing here? So this is DIY here. It's um, trying to replicate some um, reclaimed wood with just some markings and imperfections, divots in the wood where, you know, different, um, 
maybe fasteners or the weather may have even affected the integrity of the wood. So I'm just using a screw, a long one, and just kind of hammering it into the wood at various odd places so that it gives it some texture. Um, the other thing that I was working on too is, you know, just kind of randomly hammering so that there's some dents in it. Mm -hmm. It makes it look a little battered and used. Um, I don't know if you can see kind of the roughness that's happening here. And I'll probably mix a, a variety of things. You can, you can gouge it with something like mm -hmm. this. You can scrape it if you have a, a scraper edge. Um, just, you know, and it, it has to be pretty random because otherwise it's going to look very um, rehearsed, mm -hmm. manufactured, yeah. And here, uh, I'm trying to see. These are the, um, the striations from the sandpaper. Sandpaper, so that adds another dimension to it. So again, just trying to make new wood look old, but make it look like we didn't do that. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> but when you're going for that look and you don't have that wood available, this is one way to achieve that look. One eternity later. Right, so we are going to uh, use our uh, dowel jig and uh, make two dowel holes. And that will make our uh, what do you call it? The thingy magic look like loading the self. The thingy magic? Yeah, the self. So the idea is to have the shelf inside the frame, make it look like it's floating, and we're using dowels for the attachment points. Right. Okay. So we're using a mouse craft joint mate jig for the alignment of our pieces because again we want the piece to look like it's floating. And uh, and the way we do it is the jig helps you align, right? As you can see. Mm -hmm. Now, where is the difficulty with that? Arbitrary, as long as you know where you want the distance to be from your bottom, right? Mm -hmm. So we use the jig to, to make them, and in our case, we wanted two dowels but with this jig, it would be a hard time to have the same size dowels, right? So we use two different sizes, which is okay. It does make our life a little easier, right? Yep. And we use a little spacer to bring these to the middle. And as you can see, these are line now, right? Mm -hmm. Which is what the jig does, and I will show you how to use the jig in a moment. So what you do, you make your, your two holes, and then you put two dowels in. And then you reverse the jig, as you can see here, right? It has grooves to fit the dowels in the right hole sizes. And now you put your spacer to make sure you're in your middle. And you drill your holes, right? And now your holes match your dowels on the bottom. Yes? You repeat that on the other side. And one of the critical things is that you're going to have to reverse, you have to mirror the piece, right? right. Which means that it is very important, since the, the dowel holes are on this side, that they will also be on that side, right? Right, so the if back you, side of the shell. Right, if you put them here, it will not work. Right. So that's a, the tricky part, if you wish. And then do you want to show them how it aligns up? Not yet. Now, what if you don't have this jig and you don't want to spend money on dowel jigs because you've never used them before? For about three or four dollars, you can buy some dowels that also have this piece in there. And that sits in the dowel jig, right? Mm -hmm. And now, if you hit the other piece, it will make an indentation that would be the, the middle of the dowel. Because it has a little, like, spike on right. it. Right. Uh -huh. Now, this is a little and more what difficult. Does that do for you? What does that do for you? It allows you to align it without having the okay. jig. It but gives you a mark. Gives you the mark to place right. your drill bit so you can drill it in the same spot. Correct. And this is very inexpensive. Actually, I thought I had a... and I don't see it. Okay. So I start by putting two dabs of glue inside the, the dowel hole. A little dab will do you? Yeah. This is quick and thick. So... 
It's both quick and thick. So okay. the name says. All right, now put the dowels. And then sit them as far as they will sit. Repeat on the other side. Just a dab of glue inside the uh, both holes. Mm -hmm. We're going to attach it to that and then. So we're using the mallet because we want a very tight fit, right? We want mm -hmm. this to look very tight. So now we're going to bring, you want to bring this over and turn it around. You might need glue here. Do you have glue here? Yeah. No, okay. I haven't. That's why I have glue in my hand. the assembly. So once again we're using our uh, El Chipo corner clamps. And the reason we do that is we've decided to use dowels for all the connections in this specific piece. And we're going to come through this side with two dowels on each side and that will give us a very nice uh, close tight connection right. Now you can use uh, screws here you don't have to use dowels right. It's not necessary to use dowels. So we're going to check all the connections to make sure we are as square as we can be. And then we're going to use the dowels. I don't think we are, what's happening? No. This is twisted. So all the way until you cannot go in there. Need to reverse it to pull it out? Yes, it's easier. You don't need to, but it's easier. And actually, if you go in and out while you're going in, it's going to clean the Do that again on this one because this one's a lot cleaner. You can. Tips and tricks go in and out on the drill. But wear eye Safety protection goggles. first. Yes. Okay. <laughs> and so you notice that we did something a little bit different with these. We we're not using the jig, we're just going to use a straight dowel. And the reason why is because we want this joint to be as strong as possible, and the dowel has to go all the way from here and into the other board. The other board. Okay, so let's use a little bit of here. On here? Yes. So you can really put on one side, and then we're going to rotate it as well. We've got a really long dowel. So I 
Please don't get to Look at this place. So what we're doing here is checking the length of the dowel. You can see that you're in about what five six inches there, or four at least. Okay. Let's see. I'll be back with the mouth and see if we can go any more. Okay. I think we're okay. as much as we can go. All right. Now we're going to cut. Okay. And you don't need this tool to do it, but we have it, so we're going to use it, which is. And this is a flush cut saw, but any saw will do. Right. But it's know. a Japanese flush cut, right? Right. And it makes a nice, fast work of it, right? Yep. Right. Disappears. And then we'll do that for the next hole and then the other remaining. More than the doubts go all the way through your pieces. And you decide how deep you want it. In my case, for just convenience, I made the depth the size of this specific drill bit. And by putting a little mark there, we know how far in the, we are in the opening, right? Okay. Because if sometimes it feels that you have topped out, especially when the dowel is very long, it's a little bit hard to know exactly where you are. Okay. All right, so we'll continue. Now we know we are exactly where we want to be, right? The, the mark just went inside, mm -hmm. which tells us that we are in the correct depth. That's another little tip and trick. Or trick and dip. Dip? To dip. So this is why we built this project. We wanted something that we can put a, a pot, a small pot on the wall and display it as art, right? Mm -hmm. So this, this is the idea we came up with. Okay. Okay. And part of this is of course, making sure that your backboard is flush to it so that it can hang appropriately on the wall and your shelf comes out away from it, right? Absolutely. Okay, so we're going to, to sand where we finished uh, with the dowels, so a little bit of sanding should make that look like a great looking joint. Okay. Again, this is just a sanding disc, you don't even need to have a, a sander for this project. Right? And as you can see, it responds to a very, very nice joint. Right? Yeah, it takes any little bit that might be sticking out from, you know, what you what you cut off and makes it nice and smooth. Okay. So this is the project. We didn't use any metal fasteners at all. Okay, so we're getting ready to apply the finish and have decided to use the beeswax. Again, not sponsored. We purchased this, but we do like it as a finish. And you can see right away that even for the plain wood, it changes the color. And again, it's really just a protective finish. Conditions the wood. And you can use it on this burned wood um, for the Shusugi Ban. It'll bring out the finish a little bit more. You don't have to because this is a finish in and of itself. But if you just want to protect it um, a little bit more and just condition it, meaning um, give it some moisture, you can do that. So we're going to apply that to the whole thing. And again, you can see this is without it. That is with it. Uh, when we're finished, we'll come back and show you what the whole thing looks like. Well, friends, and this is our final product. After Mrs. DIY used some uh, bee wax on it to protect them and bring out the grain. Now let's talk a little bit about cost. We use scraps 
which means we wasted some wood because we have to dimension the scrap in the same dimensions. So but then we have new scraps. Right, now we have new, more scraps. But you can buy a two by three for about $5 and have the wood you need to do that, right? You will have to, to double it to make this self. Mm -hmm. or make it a little more complex, but the cost still will be about $5. Now, what if you have a way to burn it or if you don't want to Suzuki bang it? The whole idea is to have some contrast, right? So you could use a dark stain or dark paint and leave it unfin the, the frame unfinished or paint it a, a lighter color, color. We think as long as you have the contrast, uh, that, that is the key, right? Mm -hmm. We're looking at the contrast. On difficulty level, I think this is a beginner level. What do you guys think? Except for the dowels. That can be a little bit challenging if you're not used to working with them. Well, but if you, you could this way, we didn't want them to sew on the side. Right, but you could use other fasteners if you right. didn't want to use dowels. I mean, this way is simple. All you need is the appropriate drill bit, right. our corners. The hidden dowels are, are a little more challenging, right? Right. But And realistically, a jig will help doing that correctly. Mm -hmm. Well, here you don't need anything, right? And I kind of like, I don't know if you can come here, but you can see the, the soak the soak differently. So you can see that that mm -hmm. was almost as in detail now, right? Mm -hmm. Now, if we had wanted to, them to show here, could we have just used the same technique Absolutely. to go straight through there and you wouldn't have yeah. to worry about them being hidden, right? Right. Miss, uh, these are hidden dowels. These are sewing dowels. And Miss DIY specifically asked for hidden dowels mm -hmm. on these joints. But you can do them uh, sewing like we did the rest of the joints. And that is pretty straightforward, right? Right. And for dowels, I used dowels that I bought at the dollar store for a buck 25. And right. I still have most of them. You know, I think we use two or the three. The package comes in 10 or 12, right. something like that. So yeah. though, that is not expensive at all. And all you need is a correct uh, size drill. Bit. Drill bit to be just about the same size or slightly larger than the dowel. Okay. Overall, I think it's a pretty straightforward, fairly uh, easy product or, or project. Mm -hmm. Nothing really trick, tricky. Did we learn anything? On this, you, the only tricky part if you have hidden dowels is that this is a mirror image, the two corners, so you need to be careful right. not to make a mistake there, but again, you can do it very simply, right? Right. Another way you can use this is to put a hook on the top here and mm -hmm. hang it for some, like, for somewhere like a corner. And if you do that, I would suggest you take the self and you center it versus in the back. Right. Here we have the shelf the way it is because it's going to be on the wall and we want it flat on the wall, right? right? And so it's flush with the backboard so that right. it can hang flush on the wall, but you're talking about moving it so that it's more centered right. along this board. Okay. And you will do that because the way it is now, it, will, it has more weight, it will want to tilt. Right. So if you hand it, you don't want it tilting, you want it to be straight. Right. But I, I like the hiding idea because corners mm -hmm. are sometimes uh, rough to do things with. Right. And putting it in a corner will also allow for the area below the corner to be used, right? It would be right. a very, very nice addition. And you could potentially scale this to a different size as well if you felt like this was larger yes. than you wanted for your corner. And even potentially, if you like the look, you can put a second self and make a mini bookcase or a mini display mm -hmm. for, for trinkets yeah. or whatever. You know? Right. So there are many, many options. We hope you did enjoy this episode. And if you did, we'd appreciate a thumbs up. If you didn't, hit the other button twice. Share, like, subscribe. Let us know what else you might want to watch in future episodes of the Urban Home Designing Channel. From Professor DIY, Mrs. DIY and Elpida, have a great summer.